in the CNET Circle Survival Guide, we're going to find an exact value using the SARC method. So we'll look at the tangent of negative 2 pi over 3. Now before we get started, here's a quick breakdown of SARC. It's just an acronym to help you remember all the steps. And these steps will ensure you have an accurate final answer. So you won't have the common mistake of omitting a negative sign or making a small error that leads to an incorrect answer. So a quick breakdown, S stands for sketch the angle. So you'll sketch the angle's terminal side. That way you know which quadrant your angle is in. The A stands for ASTC. That's another short little acronym that helps you know which trig functions are positive in each of the quadrants. So we'll do that so we can decide if our final answer, our exact value, should be positive or negative. And that really tackles that common error of omitting a negative sign. In the third step, the R, we'll find the reference triangle, so the reference angle, the special right triangle and coordinates to work with. And the C, our final step, we will calculate our trig ratio. So we're going to do this for the tangent of negative 2 pi over 3. Okay, so let's start. First, observe that our angle is negative. All that means is that we have clockwise rotation. So here's zero rotation. And if we rotate in the clockwise direction for a half rotation, we should know that that's negative pi radians of rotation. And I like to rewrite it as negative 3 pi over 3 in this case. Um, that way we have a common denominator with our angle um, that we're trying to find an exact value for. And I think it becomes a lot easier to see, okay, well, here would be negative 1 pi over 3. And so here our angle is negative 2 pi over 3. It's in the third quadrant. Once we know where our angle is, terminal side is located, we're ready for step two. So think ASTC. You can remember that by thinking of the phrase, all students take classes. So start in quadrant one and label, working your way around in order, A, S, T, C. So this tells you which trig functions should be positive in each quadrant. They're all positive in quadrant one. Sine and its reciprocal cosecant are the only ones positive in quadrant two, while the rest are negative. Our angle's in quadrant three, and the T tells us that tangent and cotangent are going to be the positive trig ratios in this quadrant. Okay, so we can already go ahead and make a note here. We're trying to find the tangent of negative two pi over three. Our final answer is going to be positive. So when we do calculations and find our reference triangle and anything else from this step on, we don't need to worry about negative signs. Um, and that just takes away another possibility for error. Okay, so we can even make a note over here in our final answer space. We know our value is going to be positive. If your angle's terminal side was in quadrant four, that C tells you cosine and its reciprocal secant are the positive trig ratios there. Okay, so now that we've decided our exact value is going to be positive, we can move on to the third step. Let's find the reference angle, our special right triangle, and coordinates. Okay, so reference angle first is just the amount of rotation from the terminal side of your angle to the x-axis. So that's this right here, this angle. And because we labeled strategically, we can, I think, easily see that from negative 2 pi over 3 to negative 3 pi over 3, that's just a pi over 3 rotation. And we know that pi over 3 radians is the same thing as 60 degrees. We normally talk about our special right triangles in terms of degrees. And so we're working with this triangle here that has a central angle of 60 degrees. So it's a 60, 30, 90 special right triangle. And I do have some videos that review the basics of special right triangles and how they um, can help us in our first quadrant of our unit circle. Um, I'll post the link to that playlist, so uh, be sure to check those out if you need a little bit of help with this next part. But we should feel confident at this point um, that we know the coordinates that pair with this triangle in the first quadrant of the unit circle are one half square root of three over two. Um, one half is smaller than the square root of three over two. It's about 0.87 as a decimal um, compared to, of course, 0.5. So I like to remember that because we know that this triangle here that we're working with has an, a much shorter leg. Its shorter leg is on the horizontal axis. And then the longer one, that's the bigger value, is our vertical. Okay, so finally we have our coordinates. We're ready for the biggest step. Let's calculate our trig ratio. So we know that the tangent of an angle in the unit circle is just going to be the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. 
So we have our coordinates from the previous step, and we're going to say that the square root of 3 over 2 is divided by 1 half. And since we're dividing by a fraction, let's multiply by the reciprocal. Quick calculation there. We see we can cross cancel that common factor of 2 cancels to 1s, and we're left with a value of square root of 3. Remember that in step two, we decided this should be positive. Okay, and then we know then that the tangent is of negative two pi over three is positive square root of three. Hopefully this helped you under, better understand the Sark method for finding accurate exact values. Um, I will post a link to a lot more worked examples. So if you're interested in those, check them out. Thanks for watching.